I know you missed me again. Yes, right. Your Mary Jane is back. That's right, baby. How you doing? I'm Mary Jane. You want to get to know me? Well, you get to know me through Sun in the 8th house of the sign of Aquarius. So, yes, I'm back again. Why is it that I'm not able to make videos every day? You got to understand something about East Coast. East Coast that I've seen, especially in the United States East Coast, is that your body wears down very quickly because your body, your organs are working very hard because right now, as I speak, it's literally 16 degrees outside, but according to the weather, it says you it'll feel like two degrees. Like just, I have a door here. You get out, if I put my hand outside, I just need to put it back in, like just to go from my house to my car to get something out. It's literally like a two minute of pondering task. Okay, should I go or not? Do I need to put this on? Do I need to put the gloves on just to go from here? And I love it. I absolutely love it because my body and myself has always felt more comfortable in a cooler environment than a hot environment like California or like with no seasons at all. Here, I love it. I love the fact that I... I wear like two layers of this on my head, jacket, long johns, gloves, and then I go just to get coffee or soup. And believe me, eating or drinking a hot soup, chicken soup and seafood soup, with this weather at a Chinese restaurant or Asian restaurant in D.C., makes it all worth it. Because you're cold when you walk in the restaurant. And when they give you that hot soup, I've never felt so good uh, eating soup versus that I have here. Okay. So anyway, guys, today we're going to be talking about sun in the eighth house for cancer ascendant people. And what happens when sun goes into the eighth house for cancer ascendant. And obviously, as you know, this is different from my sun in houses, sun in signs. Because now we're combining the two things together. And if you do not know, if you have the sun here and all the other planetary placements, all the other astrological details for that, check out the links here. Check out my full astrological report, including my books, Astrology, Conjunction, and Aspects of the Speed of Light, including my consultations at this link. So let's talk about sun in Aquarius in the eighth house. So for a Cancer sun in person, sun rules the second house of family, wealth, lineage, food, speech. It represents many things. It represents career of your children. It represents um, your spouse's family, meaning that your own family will be your spouse's family. It represents gains of your gains through the mother or gains of the mother. It represents the illnesses of your gurus. I mean, I can go on and on and on, but mainly I'm just sticking by the main second house. The second house is about what you value. What do you value? See, money is something that we value, right? So it's money. But second house is not just money. It's what we value. That's what becomes money. That's what becomes wealth to us. So that's what second house is. Then, ruler of this is Leo, which is a fixed sign. And it's a regal sign. It's a royal sign because Cancer sign and people feel like that their family is the most royal part to them. Their family is their kingdom. Because cancer is all about home and family, so why wouldn't be the family be the royal part for them? And then ruler of this son now goes into the eighth house. What is eighth house? Eighth house represents secrecy, occult, mysticism, sorcery, tantra, death, Rebirth, surgeries, ups and downs, transformations, taxes, government secrets, conspiracies, ghosts, spirits. The, 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 this is the most mysterious um, house in the zodiac. And this is why many times 
a prediction of astrologer will fail when he's dealing with or he or she is dealing with the 8th house or 12th house. Especially 8th house is like a wormhole. 8th house is the house of unpredictability. So the keyword unpredictability here shows that anything can happen with this house. An exalted planet can suddenly give a bad results. A, ba a, a debilitated planet can give great results. So what is the sun doing? Well, Aquarius, which rules the eighth house, see Aquarius is a sign of humanity. It's a sign of social welfare, social reform, because it's sixth from the sixth. It represents gains and it represents scientific thinking. It represents wanting to uh, improve the conditions of the society. Aquarius is a sign of pretty much, I would say, the Kalyu, the new age, the age of information, the age where man will receive all kinds of information, negative information and positive information. Because remember, the symbolism of Aquarius is this old man with the vase carrying it. And this is a symbolism that he's carrying the wealth of information and he pours it. Now whatever comes out of it, it's for you to keep, whether it's good or bad. So when sun goes here as a second lord in the eighth house in a fixed sign, one thing you will see is that your father, because sun is a significator of father, authority, whoever is an authority in your family, whether it's father or whoever, will have many secrets with him. He will have secret wealth. He will also be engaged in secret activities, which he will not tell anybody. So if you say that, well, my father doesn't do any of this. Well, of course, because it's secret. It's hidden activities. He's not going to tell you that. So obviously, <laughs> It shows that his disalignment will be working because he's not going to tell you that. This is a very secretive father. He has hidden treasure, hidden investments. He deals with, you know, um, most definitely this can show a father who might be working as a government spy, who can be working in a government sector related to treasury, related to taxation, working in a tax office. But this... It shows that the authority of the family will have many hidden things and hidden treasures. Like your father is a person, when everything's going bad, somehow, suddenly, he brings about money out of nowhere. He's like, oh, I got found money. I think we'll be good. That's what the son does here. Your father secretly loves to be a philanthropist. Your father would secretly like to give money to people in need. And because second house represents your wealth, what you're hoarding, what you're getting, that being in the eighth house shows that whatever you hoard will come through a secret source and will come through other people's sources, meaning you will accumulate your wealth through other people's sources. So, you can see here people who may go into, let's say, financial management. They like to manage other people's finances because through other people's assets, which is the eighth house, they make their gains, they make their money. These are the people who love to go and work for NASA and science and research, wanting to be, you know, doing nuclear military research because Aquarius is an air sign but the nakshatras that are ruled in Aquarius represents the secret mystical side, especially the nakshatra of Sastabisha, ruled by Rahu. Rahu is like this chameleon. Rahu is like this deceiver. You see something else, but in reality, it's something else. And especially in the Sastabisha nakshatra, Father can be a surgeon, father, father can be, uh, you know, a medical professional who heals people. But also in Sastavijaya Nakshatra, you'll find that father could be an alcoholic.
And anytime you go for resources, anytime you want to attain something, it'll always be from a hidden source. It'll always come out of nowhere mysteriously. Like you never applied for a job and you're out of money, but somehow, some way, somebody calls you for a job. Like, hey, do you want to earn money? Because remember, second house is earning. Do you want to earn money with me? It's like, who are you? He's like, well, your friend told me once about you. I had your number. I called you. So unpredictability to earn money is there. But because sun is our vitality, our energy, our ego, our spirit, our soul, shows that we really hide our true confidence beneath us like or hidden from the world like people don't really know who you really are at, a, at one point in a party you are a very jovial person next time somebody meets you you're just a mysterious person sitting in a corner uh, uh, in the couch and not talking and you just don't understand why this person is doing such things such activities it shows that one will hide their, uh, their um, lack of confidence by showing enormous amount of ego. Anytime with this placement, when someone really showed enormous amount of ego, meaning that they're trying to like cover who they really are, because here the soul is in the darkness. Soul is in like a, like a dark room. It's searching. This person is always searching for who they are. Who they want to be and usually they find themselves to occultic activities they find themselves through sorcery they find themselves to uh, engaging in uh, you know secret information related to government and they're like wow i know the secret of the government my ego will rise now will this give a bad relationship with the father because obviously eighth house is a very negative house one thing I've seen in my own experience and research of this by doing consultations and, you know, uh, seeing people's replies, talking to people, is that it's very important to look at the dispositor of Sun here, especially Saturn, because Aquarius is our sign which is co-ruled by Saturn and Rahu. But especially Saturn, look at the position of Saturn. Is Saturn exalted? Is Saturn is uh, in its own sign or Saturn is debilitated? That will show how the relationship will be with your father because i have seen people have father as their best friends with this position and after enough of looking at this position i really saw that the dispositor of saturn matters your your ability to find the hidden resources your ability to find treasure inheritance which the eighth house represents will all be dependent upon saturn is Saturn well placed? Then you also want to look at Rahu because Rahu will show the superficial side and the mystical side of this uh, sun. Like let's say if Saturn and Rahu are in the sign of Scorpio in the fifth house, sun is in the eighth house, most definitely you can bet that your father engages in an activity of like magic and occult mysticism he loves to go see astrologers and learn, learn about mysterious tantras and does all these weird remedies. Because here's the thing, you get a father varies, who is very unpredictable and who is just very um, abstract in his way to approach life. You'll be like, man, my father is just a weird person. I don't know who he is. And that is supposed to be him. When you question your father who he is, that is the true position of sun because you're not supposed to know who he is and you're not supposed to know who you are. You will always be searching for yourself in the darkness with this. And this is where great research comes out. And because when these people go towards research, I want to know who I am, what's my soul. They learn about a million other things and they're able to help a million other people. And because it's the fixed sign going to the fixed sign and it's the second Lord going to the eighth house, Seventh from itself, you find yourself because seventh house is the mirror. You're looking at yourself and you look at yourself through the darkness of life. Okay, 
So guys, this is my analysis of sun in the eighth house for Cancer Sun. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And again, if you want to know where your sun is placed, all your other planetary placements, all my books, consultation, reports, for that, check out the links here. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.